from head to toe, they thought they looked pretty great. But as great as they looked, these styles were deadly. Well, hello there. I'm Christina and you're listening to History and Hearsay. Lately, we have been discussing deadly fashions during the Victorian era, but it turns out that history is full of examples of deadly fashion in pretty much every century. Take this incredible headdress, for example. This was called the Fontange. It was named after one of King Louis XIV's mistresses. This headdress stood tall on top of the head and it was pinned at the back using a wire. The person wearing this headdress would arrange their hair in curls so that it kind of went around the headdress and it made it appear as though you had huge hair. If you've seen any movies set in the 17th or 18th centuries, then you've probably seen a lady wearing one of these. It was covered in ruffles and lace and it stood several feet high. Women all across Europe were crazy about these headdresses and went to great lengths so that their hair would be arranged properly to support the style. They used various techniques in order to stiffen their hair and make these headdresses fit properly. This included things like putting egg whites, starch, or even flour in their hair and then not washing it for weeks on end so that it could could stand up on its own and support these headdresses. Now, you might be wondering, what made these hairstyles dangerous? Well, apparently women started having issues with a variety of vermin, including lice, mites, and even mice making holes in their hair. And if that wasn't bad enough, as these hairstyles started getting higher and higher, they started getting so high that they could easily reach the height of a lit chandelier and catch fire. The higher the hair, the closer you come to meeting God. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if anyone ever actually died from this, but it definitely resulted in some pretty serious injuries. Regardless of this, people were so committed to these things that women started suggesting that they should flatten babies' heads at birth. You know when they're in that stage where the bones are still growing and their head can conform to a shape? Yeah, during that period of an infant's life, these women thought that society should come up with a way to flatten these babies' heads so it would be easier for them to wear their headdresses with ease once they became an adult. Luckily, I don't think anyone ever actually did this, but it was a prevalent enough idea that it was recorded down as something that people were thinking, yeah, we should definitely do that. Now, if you want to hear about something that for sure killed somebody, we have to talk about the wide skirts known as crinoline skirts. These were wide hoop skirts, structured petticoats covered with fabric that came out as an alternative to wearing multiple stiff layers. According to the Massachusetts Historical Society, women liked crinolines because they eliminated the need for stiff undergarments and allowed them to move more freely. These skirts could extend out as wide as 18 feet and cartoons during the Victorian era routinely made fun of just how wide these skirts actually were. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm showing you guys an example of one of these cartoons, and it was basically suggesting that women were crushing men with how wide these were. And this cartoon was also making fun of the fact that wearing these wide skirts were keeping women a mind-boggling distance away from other party guests. I know you guys are here for the violence, so we gotta talk about the consequences of wearing these skirts. That was certainly no laughing matter. And that is, it was really common for these skirts to catch fire. Not only were they made of flammable fabric because of course they were, but they also contained large pockets of air which could fuel the blaze. And since the skirts were so large, women really couldn't control what they would brush against as they were walking around, which meant women would accidentally brush up against flames or candles or stovetops. Their skirts would catch fire and many women burned to death as a result. Several famous poets and writers lost someone in their life because of this. Fanny Longfellow, who was the wife of poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow in 1861, she had been working on something for her children when a piece of lighted paper fell 
caught her dress on fire. In a moment, she was enveloped in flames. Despite attempts to save her life, Fanny Longfellow died. Oscar Wilde's half-sisters also gruesomely perished after their skirts caught on fire. The sisters attended a Halloween party in 1871 in Ireland where one of the sisters brushed up against a candle and went into flames. The other sister tried to save her life, but her skirt caught on fire as well and both perished in the flames. There's also record of a ballerina who I think I've mentioned in a previous episode. She danced too close to stage lights and went up in flames and this was due to the crinoline skirt that she was wearing. In 1863, newspapers reported a young kitchen maid who died in a similar fashion. No pun intended. In 1858, the New York Times reported that an average of three deaths a week were caused by these skirts. And some sources estimate that at least 3,000 women died in the Victorian era as a result of catching on fire wearing one of these skirts. While the New York Times article reporting on this death back in the 1800s was trying to warn women about the dangers of wearing such garments, the tabloids were still putting out cartoons poking fun at these fashion trends and the fact that they were leading to so many deaths. One read, We would suggest that every lady wearing a crindolin should be accompanied by a footman with a pail of water. Luckily for women everywhere, this super wide skirt trend was short-lived. After the Civil War, ministers started to take a hard line that women should not be wearing such fashions, not because of the health risk, but because of the risk these skirts posed that someone might see a woman's undergarments or bare skin. In 1870, wide hooped skirts were replaced by bustles, which were full in the back but slim in the front. These allowed women to achieve a desired shape, but without all of the inconveniences. The era of the 18-foot hoop skirts was over. If you know anything about fashion, you probably aren't surprised that shoes are on this list. Chopins were women's shoes that were created in Venice in the early 1500s. This shoe featured a large platform made of wood or cork that was designed, like modern shoes, to protect the foot while walking around in public. But these shoes took it a step further by adding a bit of height. These shoes were often covered in silk or gold and measured up to 20 inches in height. And as seems to be a trend here, the height became a status symbol. The taller you were, the more rich and important you were perceived to be. Now the highest heels I think I've ever worn back in the day were five inches. I can't imagine this. 20 inches. So as you guys can imagine, as these shoes got taller and taller, women started to fall down a lot. They were breaking bones, snapping their ankles, and because of the lack of x-ray technology at this time, these broken bones would often not be given the proper medical treatment, leading to infections and ultimately death. So, since deadly fashion constantly brings us back to the Victorian era, we have to talk about how millions of small songbirds were silenced so that they could be used as fashion accessories. In the 19th century, it became popular for women to wear dead birds on their hats. One or more dead birds would be mounted on hats, but it wasn't the birds themselves that were the problem. It was the arsenic that was used on them. Taxidermists of that day used arsenic-laced soaps and other products to preserve birds and other creatures. Some fashion commentators in the Victorian period spoke out against this practice, not because of the arsenic, but for the sake of the birds. In 1887, a writer in Dress and Beauty by the name of Mrs. Hawes wrote against using these smashed birds, saying, a corpse is never a really pleasant ornament. The arsenic used on hats during the period remains behind and some historic women's hats are still harmful to humans today. If you enjoyed today's episode, you will love this episode where we talk about deadly fashions that were killing men during the Victorian era. So check that out and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you would like to hear more about these deadly fashions because you know I have more. And until next time, I'll catch you right here in the next one. (laughs) 